sudden, one day again, in came the hairy guy in his robe and his, his weightlifter belt, and he comes up, actually in this case, he and the king kind of met together. The king was called, and they met together, and the <laughs> king raised his finger and said, you! He thought that was really cool, because he could do it to the E.T., see? You are the person to trouble in Israel. And I can just see E.T., who was Elijah the Tishbite, that's the E.T. part. I can just see E.T. going back and, not me, but you! <laughs> and that just shut up King Ahaz's mouth. Up. Well, I well, I just thought I got to stop. I got to stop. The soldier, you can't talk to the king. Huh? Oh, it's all right. It's okay. Talk to the king any way you want. It's okay. Because this guy was impressive. Impressive, I'm telling you. And he said to you, troubled, I'll tell you what we're going to do. It's been three and a half years since you had one sprinkle of rain. Makes it dirty again. Three and a half years. Springs, most springs did all dry up, but streams and cricks and rivulets and streamlets and streamettes, all those things just dried up. And it's hard to find water, and the cattle were, uh, the trees were going, uh, and the flowers were dead and gone. It just looked like you were sitting on a desert with no water. And he says, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to take care of the water problem, but before we do that, we're going to take care of this God problem. You guys think. You guys think your God looks like that? No. You guys think your God looks like that? No, of course not, but they did. You think your God is a God that goes around every year killing somebody, laughing about the blood that she said? That's, that's what you think? We're going to straighten that up. Come and meet me at a place called Mount Carmel. Now, Mount Carmel was not a huge mountain <coughs> like the Rockies. Mount Carmel was at the highest point, about, about 1,500 feet high, about 400 feet higher than we are right now. <laughs> but where they were beating at was probably about this height. And if they looked over to the side, down, down below them, it was a 500 feet section moving up about 600 feet. And they could look out across the promontory and they could see the Mediterranean Sea. And it was a beautiful scene. They could look over this way and they could see Samaria way down there. They could see Jezreel about 17 miles away. There's a humongous, beautiful, beautiful oh viewing. God. He says, meet me up there when you come. Meet me on Carmel. Meet me on Mount Carmel. When you come there, make sure you bring the 450 prophets of Baal that, that worship this ugly creature here, the ones that your wife hires and pays for, and then bring the other 400 people she feeds every day. They're called prophets of the grove. <coughs> so you bring 850 prophets here, and you come and bring anybody you want. Bring your army, I don't care. But tell everybody who wants to come that you come there. And so, consequently, they did just that. The day came up, it was early in the morning, and already there were thousands of people there. Thousands of people. Because they wanted, first of all, I want to see this E.T. He must be impressive. We never saw him before. He said, the rain's going to come. I'm thirsty. Let's take a look at this dude. They go out there and they see him, and he was impressive. They go, ooh, ooh, ooh. Don't badmouth that guy. I hate to be in the heat. I hate to be in him in an alley, in a dark, dark alley. Ooh, 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 ooh. And then he started talking. He says, ladies and gentlemen, we're here today to demonstrate one of two things. Either this God you worship, Baal, is really a God, <coughs> or he's not. Either he's there, Baal, Mot, and Anat. Either they're real gods or they're not. I'm here to tell you that there's one real God. Amen. That doesn't look Amen. a whole lot more like, like God. Amen. Jesus yeah. is God. You know that, of course. Yeah. I'm telling you, this is the kind of, there's the, where the real God is. These people are a bunch of frauds. There is no such thing as any God except this one, but we're going to prove it today. Let's have a little test. And the 850, I mean, 850 is a lot of little counting. One, two, three, four, five, seven. That's a lot. 850 prophets of Baal, <coughs> prophets of the grove, all standing around feeling, yeah, we'll prove it up. Yeah we'll, yeah, we'll just do that. Here's what we'll do. How about if we have a test, and the one that wins the test will say, their God is really God. Yeah, that sounds right. What's the test? We're going to have ourselves, we're going to build, a, build an altar, offer a sacrifice, and call for the God to be able to come down and devour that sacrifice. Just set fire to that sacrifice. Well, that sounds like cool enough. And if it doesn't work, the one that does work, that's God. Yeah, that's right. The people thought that was wonderful. Now, the prophets of Baal weren't too sure. <laughs> they didn't have a whole lot of real working evidence with their God, but they would always say he was a cool dude. 
However, he hadn't been doing much for the last three years. So maybe he was, okay, they had to say okay, because there's thousands of people say, what, you don't like that deal? You better like that deal. Oh, yeah, we like that deal. It's a good deal. Good deal. Okay. So they came along, and the prophets of Baal came up, and they started building a sacrifice, an altar. They started building an altar. We're going to use this one altar for both for tonight. They started building an altar, and they brought the stones in, this had been used for both a good place of sacrificing and a bad place of sacrificing three or four years before. But because things were so bad, with no water, and everything was dying, all the beautiful trees and bushes and shrubs and everything on top of the hill here, top of the mountain they called it, were dead. And it was really a sad looking place. And they came on little by little, They were, and this was, this was November, so it wasn't as hot as now, but it was still dry, which makes you hot anyway. And then they sat there and they put it together, he said, okay, and you call upon your God and have him light that fire. And so they started. They started going through their procedure. <laughs> they were going to go ahead and bring their God Baal. They were going to prove that Baal existed. Baal was going to win. And they did this for two hours. They did it for four hours. And occasionally Elijah would go and help out. Maybe he should scream a little bit. <laughs> and a couple of hours went by, and then Elijah would help him out more. Why don't you go ahead and, and yell again because he's probably asleep. <laughs> a couple of hours went by, and Elijah said, I'll help you out again. Maybe he's on a vacation. A little louder, a little louder. Go on vacation. <laughs> Elijah did, the E.T. did a wonderful job, and, then they, and pretty soon, it was almost dark. And they were so tired, they just didn't have any energy up to go. They had to go over the side and sit down because they had tried all they could. They'd even tried to light this fire by looking at that bird up there and striking some flints. And Elijah would say, <coughs> Oh yeah, yeah, well, I was just practicing. <laughs> they were dead tired. He said, Okay, people, I'm going to do something. Let me build an altar. Now, I know we're only using one here, but this would be the, as if it's another altar. And he brought stones up. Now, he probably could have carried it by himself. I'm not sure. I believe he probably could have. Had him build up an altar. And on top of that altar, he put down sticks. And it was, on top of the sticks, he put down a bullock. Like a lamb. Only it's like a cow lamb. On top. And then he said, you know what? To make sure that no one claims there's going to be any trickery. Like some people I've like mentioned. <laughs> no trickery involved. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pour on some water. I want you to take I want you to take some barrels empty, go down over the hillside here to a little spring that today is still there, it never goes dry. Fill this with water and bring it back up. Four barrels. They do. They go down, they bring the four barrels up, they pour it over top of this thing. It's all soaking wet. Why don't you do that again? They go and they fill the four barrels up again. That looks pretty good. Water started to dribble over the side, and he had a dug. He had dug a trench around there, like a little moat around the castle. He dug a trench, two measures worth. It hold two measures. That would be about 240 gallons of water. Okay, it would hold that much. And when they came back the third time with these all these gallons of water, <coughs> oh, many hundreds of gallons, it covered the sacrifice, and it laid in the little trench in the little trench. And he said, now, we've covered and we, we are ready to see whose God is really God. And he said, now let's pray. Let me pray. You just be quiet and listen. <laughs> he said, dear God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, that's what Jacob's name was when they changed it, Israel, let these people know that whereas Baal, Mot, Anat, and those things are really not real, let them know you are the real, the only God in all the world. The one that loves them very much wants them to be able to come back and serve him and love him again like they used to before this king. Of course, the king was there and he would like to say something nasty, but he wasn't feeling too good about Baal himself right then. <laughs> and so consequently, he said nothing. The soldiers were scared of Elijah, so they didn't say anything <coughs> either. He said, Amen. <coughs> oh. And it came down 
and it came down and sucked up the wood. It sucked up the sacrifice. It sucked up the water in the trench. And it sucked up the stone. Trickery? Oh, no. You can't burn up stones. It doesn't happen. And you don't burn water very easily either, I might add. You leave it on a stove, it may boil over, but it doesn't burn. God is not this. And as young people, you need to know that. He's not some stump or some rock. He's not some weird looking creature. He's not this. He's not some blood covered, bloodthirsty person. And he's not some devil possessed, devil looking, three headed monster with all kinds of feelers and so on. <coughs> God is someone who loves you very much. Just like he did back then. And he proved it to them, and he'll prove it to you anytime you need it. You pray to God, and God will answer you. Maybe it won't be with fire. But fire won't be what you'll need. You'll need something else. And he will provide you what you need. Your age, like the little person here, or an old person like me. Just ask. And just like E.T., God will hear you. And God will provide. And now you know how much God loves you.